All right. So we're going to be moving to the panelist portion of the program. We can go ahead and sit back down. We have a, all the exciting stuff actually coming up now where we're going to ask the questions that you guys have been wanting to hear about. So first of all, I'd like to introduce Jared Bassler. He is the co-founder at Maxible. He is on the board at the Casita Coalition, chair of the ADU Coalition, AIA Young Architect of the Year. He's done over 200 plus ADUs and designed and permitted them, and a member of the ADU Industry SME. I do not know what that acronym is, unfortunately. Next, we have <laughs> subject matter expert. Got it. <laughs> Kalani uh, Kretzberg from ADU Geeks. He is the founder and CEO. He has, um, prior to being a part of ADU Geeks, he got his, he was a member of the Marine Corps, hoorah, uh, where he did logistics for 12 years. He is a, Sa a University of San Diego graduate and with a master's in taxation. He founded and operated a housing for homeless veterans program for three years. He currently, uh, between himself and his team, has 136 ADU projects between design, permits, and construction, and is a member of the ADU coalition as well with Jared, and his team is instrumental in bringing forward ADU opportunity to the San Diego market. So thank you very much, and we just heard from Gary as well. Myself, having worked on projects, I appreciate all the things Gary's done to bring housing to San Diego. So. To start everything off, I want to start with first Kalani. Um, what does it look like and how do you start the process um, to do an ADU when you're a realtor or your client wants to start? And if we could keep our answers to two minutes, that'd be great. Two minutes, that's tough. Well, luckily, Gary covered most of it. Piggybacking off of what he said, the very first starting point is truly getting an understanding of what you can and cannot do on your property. That is so important. Whether you're working with your designer or your contractor, you have to understand what you can't do, what you can do, marry that up with your vision, and then equally important is get a very good cost estimate for what it's going to run. Not just cost of construction. Many times we'll talk to a contractor and they'll say it's gonna cost X. But there's so many other fees involved, as Gary mentioned. You've got design fees, school fees, permit fees, water sewer fees. Those numbers can easily blow your budget and you'll quickly find yourself in a project that you may or may not want to be part of. So get a good understanding for that. And then the last thing I'm gonna say is, start with the end in mind. Why do you want the ADU? Are you renting it out or is it for family? If you're renting it out, how many bedrooms and bathrooms do you want? Because I'm here to say, even though we could do 1,200 square foot ADUs, doesn't mean you need to do 1,200 square feet. Two bedroom, one bathroom, I could get that done for 750, maybe 800 square feet. And that's a great way to keep costs down. And then understand how much can you rent the ADU for? Because in my opinion, that is what should dictate what your budget is to do the project. So start with the end in mind, get what's called a feasibility study done. So Jared's company can do the feasibility study, my company can do it, but that's the best way to understand what you're getting into before you start. Jared, do you have anything to add to that in the process? Yeah, um, one of the things that Gary was talking about, and um, we're talking about what you can do on your property. Gary's talking about property lines and setbacks and all of that. Um, just for those of you at City of San Diego, a great way to just eyeball it um, is to go to the back of the sidewalk and look down the block. Um, you're gonna see, uh, you're gonna see this line that keeps moving in and out, uh, where. The property line is and then someone pops out a fence it's a good way to just get a quick understanding of where the property line may be it's not always going to be accurate and just giving you something to help you understand that from a perspective of what's been uh, developed both legally and illegally over time <laughs> and from the city's perspective gary any input on that uh, we offer a virtual appointment um, I encourage people to do, it's one of our most um, requested services. Uh, 15, 20 minutes with a city staff member, looks at your property, tells you what zone it's in, looks up existing permits sometimes, and just walks through those ADU regulations and lets you know 
what you can and can't do on that property. It's really important that first step. Oftentimes we get homeowners that come in with something, they didn't do that step, they didn't talk to someone like this. They submitted something that doesn't comply. What do we say, no? Well, no, at this point we gotta be creative and how do, how do we get to yes? Okay, you can't do this, but you could do this. So we have to work with them. And that, at that point it's, it can be too late and it can blow out all these budget considerations that uh, Kehlani talked about. But it's really important to just look at, the, look at the rules, read through them. We have a robust website, I'm serious. And like I said, realtors, you guys are very important. You are educators. You tell your clients what they can and can't do and it's very helpful. Excellent, thank you. And realtors, remember, it is not your responsibility to actually pull the permits and verify them. If you start bringing them to the table without bringing in an outside consultant like one of the gentlemen on the table here, um, you're actually bringing on liability for yourself. So consider that when going through the process. You want to be a guide when it comes to this stuff. Okay, Jared, what options are you seeing right now for financing and do you have any recommendations for people who are trying to finance their ADUs? So that's actually a question for Kalani, not for me. Okay. I, I stay out of financing as much as I possibly can. <laughs> Kalani? So, disclaimer, I'm not the lender. Um, I'll tell you what I'm saying. Most everyone is leveraging their equity using home equity line of credit, cash out refi. That's where you're gonna find the best rates. Now, everybody, every situation is different. It's based off of cash, credit, income, right? And, and their equity. Um, if they don't have the equity, there is the opportunity to borrow against the future value of the property uh, after the ADU is done. So let's say one of your clients just bought a, a piece of property, so naturally they may not have the equity. That's how you do it. It's called a renovation loan and or a construction loan, uh, used interchangeably often. And then if those three options don't work, then there's other types of money, hard money loans, which I wouldn't suggest. And then I do know that there's some folks out there in the marketplace, I've never used them, but they're saying, hey, we'll finance your ADU deal if you give us 50% of the rent. So there's all kinds of creative stuff happening right now. Excellent. Thank you, Kalani. So Gary, for you, what direction do you see the policy going on ADUs? Do you see it being more strict or more liberal as we move forward? Well, since we've had so much success, we're kind of a victim of our own success. Certain groups have come out uh, because in their neighborhoods they're seeing things that aren't typical uh, of the neighborhood They're imagining character. things that <laughs> aren't real. <laughs> Somewhat. So, so the setback issue has been the major concern in Kensington, Talmadge, I would say, in that area. Um, they're used to a more historic established neighborhood. With setbacks, there have been some projects that are using the encroachments, um, which there's a lot of projects, a lot of existing structures already within the setback. So it's typically that second story addition. Um, we have made our case, um, there's some changes that might come forward that might reduce the setback back to the forefoot more in line with the, with the state. Um, but I think we have a good enough case um, with the numbers that show we've, we can increase our naturally afforded, affordable small infill development units within the city of San Diego if we keep ADU regulations as is. If you eliminate some of the setbacks, some of these lots just won't be able to maintain or uh, accommodate it. Um, the mayor in the city, city address last night talked about how important it is we need to do housing. The state's telling us we need 15,000 units a year. Uh, that, I don't know when that's going to happen, but I can tell you ADUs have been a quarter of our housing production for the past several years. That's huge. Going from zero to a quarter of all new housing units, and it's, it's just naturally affordable infill development. So I think the numbers speak for themselves, and I, I would hope that this current council um, is wise enough to, to, to leave the regulations as is. And you Jared, can attend the, count, the committee meeting today at one and make your voices heard to keep the regulations where they are. Please do. Excellent, thank you. Jared, what does the process look like and how long does it take right now to get permits on an ADU? So we're gonna take a step back, um, talk about state ADU law saying that cities have 60 days to review, and this is something that's out there and people don't really understand. 60 days to review a project and it's deemed approved. Well, who's it deemed approved by? The state's not out there, not gonna come out and inspect it. The city's gonna be the one that comes out and inspects it. Every process has changed over the last year and a half, and because of that, there's not many cities that are meeting that. Uh, staffing shortages, all sorts of things that are, we're running into. I would say that 
it's not as bad as at the height of lockdowns and um, we are seeing new processes emerge, whether they're digital, uh, hybrid, otherwise. Um, but we're seeing those times come down, but you should not you should at least have six months set aside for, from the point at which you start a, a design on a project to when uh, you anticipate going, uh, starting your construction, and that's a minimum. Obviously, there's certain kinds of projects that can be done quicker, uh, other types of projects that take longer, and, and each jurisdiction is gonna be different. Yeah, I would just like to clarify that. There's, there's a piece of it before it even comes to us that is with the design professionals. Homeowners call me like, it's been a year. Well, I just got it three months ago. I don't know where it was before that. Um, but there is that component to it, and there's the actual permit process, which depending on the jurisdiction, there is short staffing, but these are to be expedited. They take priority because it is housing. Um, so it, the city of San Diego, is, at least, we've set up a separate queue for ADU projects so that we have certain staff looking at them and trying to get them out and meet that 60 days. It's really difficult to meet that 60 days, but we're doing our best. Thank you. And we're going to be moving towards our closing remarks here. Uh, before we do, please note that you can get the information from the QR codes on the table. Additionally, if you're looking to learn more, feel free to come up and talk to us. And I'm also hosting an event next Saturday. If you want to come back to an actual ADU site and learn about the process, see how the ADUs are getting built, feel free to come up to me and I'll get you the information on that. So in closing, Gary, could you tell us in a short blip, probably 40 seconds as I see the clock, <laughs> um, what about the policies currently do you appreciate and what about the policies in place right now do you not appreciate and where do you see that going? I, the most important policy is the fact that it's a ministerial permit and that now we have concurrence with the Coastal Commission that these can be ministerial in nature uh, that reduces time and cost, which is most important in this world. Kalani? I would say it is, I'm most appreciative of the provision that allows for non-owner occupancy with ADUs. Now it's set to sunset at 2025. I'm part of the ADU coalition led by Jared. And we were just talking about how we hope that um, that'll get resolved before then. Um, I'm also very hopeful that junior ADUs, speaking for myself, junior ADUs will go away and be replaced with, let's just do, let's just call it an ADU. So we could have two ADUs on every lot. And I will follow that up by saying that is not a current proposal that is in place right now. That's where it's going though. Um, the idea, the JADU was always kind of something different and everyone is, you know, on the legislative side would really like to see it just become two ADUs. Um, it's a complicating factor, the owner occupancy. The owner occupancy is because it can share a bathroom. You don't want two tenants with different leases being able to lock each other out of a bathroom. Um, but my, uh, what I'm most grateful for, um, working with people like Gary who are continually looking at how this can improve rather than um, just leaving things static. I, I think that especially the city of San Diego has done a great job at continuing to push the needle forward, whether it's on policy or on process. Um, and the pro you, you don't have housing policy without process reform. Um, otherwise, it's just lip service. You can t put all the great policies in place, but if you don't have the process to back it up, that uh, it doesn't work. So appreciate the, the work that Gary's thank doing you. to make sure that it continues to improve. All right, thank you gentlemen for coming today for the ADU panel, thank you everybody. And if you could give them a big round of applause. We will be up here for the next 15 minutes while they pull down the air walls. Feel free to come ask any questions.